Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you this morning as we gather together in God's presence to receive his gifts of the spoken word this morning through which he brings that precious, precious message of the forgiveness of sins to all of us. Pastor Kyneth is with uh, his wife, Lynette, down in Denver and uh, caring for their son, David, following his surgery this last week. He's, David is recovering well, but there's no news yet on the results of the pathology reports yet, so they're still down there, and he's recovering well, so we continue to pray for them. Our service this morning is printed out in the worship folder, and we begin with the singing of hymn 849, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, hymn 849. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment now to silently reflect upon this word of God that we have just spoken and to examine ourselves. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the Savior and the Lord To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I am helped. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the Savior and the Lord is the In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free 
to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor boasting and glory are His. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory are night. He took For our God, for the Lamb who was slain, has begun His reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, let your merciful ears be open to the prayers of your humble servants and grant that what they ask may be in accord with your gracious will through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the scripture readings. The Old Testament reading for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading comes from the epistle of James, chapter 2, selected verses. My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, And a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in. And if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or sit down at my feet. Have you not then made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blaspheme and the honorable name by which you were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law 
as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed, be filled, without giving him the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. This is the word of the Lord. In honor to our Lord Jesus Christ, we rise for the singing of the Alleluia and verse and the reading of the gospel. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Jesus went on from there and walked beside the Sea of Galilee. And he went up on the mountain and sat down there. And great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put them at his feet, and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. May be seated and we invite the children up for a children's message with Pastor Brindernecht. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm glad that you came up today so I can show you what I have inside this box. Otherwise, I couldn't open it up. Um, yeah, they, Okay, I've got a couple things. First of all, I have, and I think you all know what this is. What is that? Yeah, Wes. That's a battery. Okay, so what's inside the battery? Yes. Electricity is inside. How do you know there's electricity in this battery? Yeah, if I put this in something that's electronic, it'll start working or not. See, sometimes batteries are empty, right? They're dead. 
and there's no electricity left in a battery. So, so we'd have to test this battery to see, because we can't see electricity inside this battery. We have to see what it does, right? That's the only way to find out. Uh, you know, we can't see electricity, even the kind of electricity that we find in the wall socket. You don't see electricity, do you? But it does stuff, right? Okay, well, I've got a flashlight here, and actually, I took this battery and three other batteries out of this flashlight last night, and I put new batteries in, and let's see what the, uh, see if there's electricity in the new batteries in this flashlight. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really makes a difference. This flashlight was so dim last night that I could hardly see 10 feet in front of my face. And now I can see a long ways. I'm not going to shine it in your face. It's pretty bright. So we can't see what's in the battery, but we can see what is in the battery does. You get that? Okay, so today in the Bible reading, in the epistle reading, it talked about faith. It talked about a number of things, but it talked about faith. What is faith? What do you think? What, how would you describe what faith is? Can you see faith? No. You know, I can't look at somebody and see that they have faith. I cannot look in someone's heart and see that they have faith in the Lord. So faith is trusting the Lord, right? Faith is believing in Jesus and believing in our God. And only God can look into the heart and know if somebody has faith. We can't do that. But what we can do is we can see what faith does on the outside. So faith always makes something happen. Faith always has an action attached to it. So, so let's think about that. So what are some things that we see that faith does? Can you think of anything? It's kind of a hard question, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. It's a great answer. She says that people who believe in God help the poor okay so that's a good example so that's faith that's acting out in love for others okay can you think of anything else that faith does i have an idea here we are in church i think that everybody who came to church today is here because of faith they have faith in god and so they are expressing that faith. They're, they're getting up in the morning. They're getting dressed. Remember, you got up in the morning, you got dressed, you came to church, and then we listen to God's word. We sing his praises. We pray to him. That's all actions of faith. We help people. And in fact, the Bible verse is talking about that, helping people. So say, say somebody comes and they, have, they need clothing and they need food, and what good does it do, the Bible says, if you just say, well, go ahead and be warm and be well-fed, but you don't do anything to get, help them be warm and well-fed? He said that that's not, there's no faith then. Yeah, Wes, what were you going to say? Right, so when you actually give them clothes and food, then that's your faith that is working itself out. It's doing action. So, so just like this battery here, without electricity, it's, we call that a dead battery. It can't do anything. It can't light a flashlight or do anything at all. That's like faith without work. So faith always is going to produce something. It's always going to make something happen. Because faith is trusting the Lord. And we trust the Lord that he forgives us when we do sin. We trust the Lord that he will help us to show love to other people and help them. And so we're thankful that God gives us faith. And he strengthens our faith every time we hear his word. Every time we come to church, there's a time for us to be strengthened in our faith. Every time we open his word and we share it during, throughout the week, we are strengthened in our faith. And then we, then we exercise, we, we do those things that faith moves us to do, like loving and helping other people and praying and worshiping God. So let's pray right now and express our faith to our Lord. Lord, thank you for giving us faith, helping us to know you, to believe in you, to trust in you every day. And we also pray that you would bless us as we grow in our faith and help us to love others because of our faith and do things that help them. Help us to obey our parents, help us to serve our neighbor, our brothers and sisters, and all those things. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thanks. You can go back to your places now. The congregation will continue with the next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the sermon today is the first portion of the Gospel reading. Hear these words once again. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is our text. Please be seated. It's probably happened to every one of us at one point or another where you said something to someone and they deliberately ignored you. Has that happened to you? You asked them a question, you wanted to get their attention, you spoke to them and they acted as if they didn't hear you and you knew that they did. How did that make you feel? Maybe you felt like they were angry with you. Maybe you felt little, you felt upset. It was not fun. Or maybe you have been put down. I think all of us at one point have been put down by somebody. We maybe have been called a name or some derogatory thing, and and it's upsetting. It happens. And it happened today in the gospel reading, it seems. But the surprising thing about it is it happened happened from Jesus. Is this the Jesus that we know and love? Is this the Jesus who welcomes sinners? Is this the Jesus who said, whoever comes to me, I will never turn away? And yet, this woman came to him and he ignored her. He didn't help her. He even called her, implied that she was a dog. Is this the Jesus that we know and love? And it seems that the disciples were picking up on this behavior as they they said to Jesus, they they begged him to send her away for she keeps on coming after us. That's in the Greek, it's like continually begging and begging. And so they said, just send her away. And then Jesus speaks. Now we're not sure if he speaks to the woman directly or to the disciples. It's almost like he's speaking to the disciples and she hears it. He says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And she was a foreigner. She was not part of the house of Israel. She was a Canaanite from the area of Tyre and Sidon. But we're kind of puzzled because Jesus, well, he didn't always treat foreigners that way. Think of the woman at the well, the Samaritan. She was not a Jew, and yet he treated her with respect. He he talked to her. He began the conversation in John chapter 4, and he led her to know that he was the one who had streams of living water and he was the messiah but here in this case he treated this woman terribly as we look at it at first blush but this woman would not give up she was a mother after all and she was a mother of a demon possessed daughter and she wanted help and she believed that jesus could help her and it's interesting that she addresses jesus in the way she did lord Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. She knew that he was the Messiah, the descendant of David as God had promised in the Old Testament. Somehow she knew and she believed that Jesus could help her. And so she knelt before him, blocking his way, and she said, Lord, help me. And of course, then Jesus says the next thing, and that's the hard one. He said, He said to her, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Now, that would have been enough for most of us to get up and turn the other way. That would have been enough for us to say, okay, that's it. 
I've had it. I'm done. But not this Canaanite woman. She stayed. She didn't protest. I'm not a dog. She didn't argue. You helped other people. Why don't you help me? She didn't demand. I deserve your help. No, to our surprise, she said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Wow. She was satisfied to be a dog. All she wanted was some crumbs from Jesus, and she knew that that would be enough. Just a few crumbs from the Lord, from the master, would be enough to help her in her desperate situation. What surprising great faith she had. And Jesus acknowledged that faith. And it's been recorded for all time where he says, Woman, you have great faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Jesus, our Lord, knew what he was doing. He was testing her. He was testing her faith. He knew her faith. In fact, he is the author and the perfecter of all faith and her faith too. He can look into the heart and he knows what he's doing. He was putting her to the test and he would not push her beyond what she was able because he indeed was the author and perfecter of her faith. And this was a great example for the disciples and I think for us too. It was a teaching moment for those disciples The disciples were in their time of instruction, these three years with Jesus, where they listened to him, they watched him, they witnessed his miracles, they learned how to relate to people, they learned how to share the message of the gospel, and they would spend the rest of their lives doing that very thing after the death and resurrection of our Lord and the ascension of Jesus. And so they needed a lesson or two. Now, their faith was not necessarily so great. We know of some examples of where they were terrified. Remember the storm on the sea where they thought for sure they were going to drown, and they wake Jesus up, and they said, don't you care if we perish? And he says, why are you afraid, O you of little faith? And then he calmed the seas. There are other times that the disciples were afraid, and their faith was shaky. We think of the time in the Garden of Gethsemane when the soldiers came, and they ran away for their lives didn't stay with the Lord. They didn't watch and pray. They fell asleep. And so they were shaky in their faith and they needed some encouragement and they needed some teaching as we do. We have faith too, don't we? We're thankful for that. But yet our faith sometimes is shaky. Sometimes we wonder if God really knows or he really cares. So as we look at this story today, I'd like to point out three things that we can learn from this story, and and I'll tell you them right off the top, and then we'll talk about them. First of all, faith does not give up when God seems to be silent. The next thing I want to talk about is faith depends on God's mercy and grace. That's important. I'll get back to that in a minute. And then faith is found in surprising places. That's something else we see in this text. So let's start with the first one here. Faith does not give up when God seems to be silent. This woman did not give up. It wasn't only the desperation she had for her daughter's welfare, it was also the fact that she had faith in this Messiah that she confessed, the Son of David, the Lord. And she would not give up, even though it seemed like the Lord was being silent to her and resisting helping helping her. Martin Luther preached a sermon on this text, and he uses... Joseph in Egypt as an example. It's interesting. Joseph, we know, with the the son of Jacob, he had his brothers, and they were jealous of him. You know that story. And if you don't know that story, check it out in the in Genesis. It's a great story. But David, or not David, but but Joseph was was sold into slavery by his brothers. They were jealous. They wanted to get rid of him. They almost killed him, but instead they sold him into slavery. And he went to Egypt. And Luther talks about how he had trouble in Egypt. Things went okay, and then they went bad. He was working for Potiphar, and then he was falsely accused of adultery with Potiphar's wife. He was thrown in prison, and Luther says, during that time, no doubt, he was praying to the Lord, asking for help, asking for deliverance, to get him out of that prison. And years went by, and he was still there, 
Luther made the point that Joseph would not stop trusting the Lord, and he trusted the Lord through all of that and prayed for God's help. And God's help came in a way that he never would have expected. Certainly he was praying that he'd go back to his father Jacob. That would have made Jacob very happy, but he would not have been able to do what he had to do. We know that Joseph was responsible through God's power and blessing to deliver people from terrible famine and save the lives of many. And he became the second most powerful man in the world. And that was because the Lord had plans for him. And even though it may seem that God was silent, he had a plan. So don't be fooled into thinking that God ignores our prayers. I know that sometimes you pray about things and you wonder, does God even hear? Sometimes you pray and you're not getting the answer that you would like to hear and see. It happens to us. And yet faith does not give up. Faith continues, even when God seems to be silent. He's not. He hears. And for Jesus' sake, he's always working for our good. He hears our prayers and while he may delay, he is forming and shaping and forging our faith so that it's stronger. And we gather together in the Lord's house once again today to be strengthened in our faith in our Lord, who always cares for us. The other point I want to make about this story is that faith depends on God's mercy and grace. We see that in the woman. I don't know, but I think sometimes as God's people, we've been Christians. Many of us have been Christians since childhood. We have been in the church. We have been regular. We can't imagine what life is like apart from being a child of God. And I think sometimes, maybe, sometimes we fall into thinking that, that we deserve this, that God owes us. We've been so faithful. God certainly owes us something. We deserve it. We have this idea that we deserve his favor because we're so faithful. And sometimes it comes out by saying that I don't deserve this. We're going through trouble or problems. I don't deserve this. Darn it. I've been working hard. I've been in the church for so long. It's not fair. Sometimes we might fall into that sin of thinking we deserve it. The woman in the story is an important example. She was willing to be identified as a dog. She didn't walk away and say, I don't deserve this. She stuck in there and she accepted. She, remember, she sees Jesus by faith as the Lord and she knows that the Lord's going to provide good for her. So she heard that and she said, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. You know, God doesn't owe us a thing. We need to remember that. We don't deserve anything but temporal and eternal punishment. We confess that, don't we? It's true. But God has chosen, though, nevertheless, to give us everything. He doesn't owe us, but he chose to give us everything. That's what we have in Christ our Lord. That's his mercy and grace, his mercy and grace, his undeserved favor, his loving kindness to us, that he showed so wonderfully and clearly in giving his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the son of David, to be our Savior. He came into the world to be our Savior. He taught, he led, he healed, but he came to be our Savior. He came to suffer and to die for us. We think about Jesus every time we see the cross, we think about what he went through for us. And we remember that he was treated worse than a dog. He was teased and ridiculed. He was tortured. He was nailed to the cross. He suffered. He died. He was forsaken by men and he was forsaken by God. His cries to the Lord were not answered. The father was silent. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we know why. He forsook 
his son because his son was carrying the sins of the whole world upon himself. And the Lord was justly punishing him because of our sin. And Jesus experienced hell, the separation from the Father. He was experiencing the anguish and punishment of damnation so that we would never have to face that. Yes, he chose to give us everything. He has mercy and grace for us. Now our story also this morning teaches us again that faith is found in surprising places. It's interesting that as we look at these words of Jesus and as we don't fully understand how he, what he did, why he did this kind of thing to the woman, but we know he knew what he was doing and we trust that. When he said, I will come only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that was, of course, his command to his disciples when they went out on their mission trip, their first mission trip. He says, don't go to any Gentiles, go to the children of Israel first. But he did not exclude the Gentiles. They were in his plan also. We clearly see that. In fact, we wonder, why was he even in the region of Tyre and Sidon in the first place? Because he had a plan. He was reaching out to all people. And it's interesting that even these, this woman, this Gentile woman, she had heard the word of the Lord somehow, and she knew that Jesus was her Savior too. We think of the Magi who came to the baby Jesus. They heard, somehow they knew that this was God's promise fulfilled. There's some mystery here. But there is no mystery when it comes to the fact that God wants all people to be saved. And he gave the command to his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and to make disciples of all nations. But getting back to this idea that faith is found in surprising places. On a more personal note, there have been times in my life that I have been surprised to see faith in individuals that I had not expected to see it. I've said it before, there had been people that I had written off by the way they were living and what they had said at one point, and I thought, they're never going to be in the kingdom. I prayed for them, but I didn't have much hope. And then the Lord humbled me as the Lord sent maybe a heart attack or some other problem, and that person turned for help and soon became another follower and believer, a person of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We should never doubt the power of God. You know, there were two individuals that Jesus made a point of talking about what great faith they had. It's interesting, and it never, we don't find that among the Jewish people, among the disciples of Jesus, but we find them here with this woman, this Canaanite woman, and we also find it in a Roman centurion where he, Jesus was amazed at his great faith. And of course, the Lord is the one who brings that great faith into anyone, whoever they are, through his word and through by his spirit. Well, may the Lord strengthen our faith. May he help us to continue to turn to him day by day. Whatever the problems we're dealing with and we are waiting for the Lord's answer, take heart. He knows our needs and he will respond according to what is best for us. And we can count on that. We see it again in his word today. In Jesus' name, amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We turn in our worship folder to the Apostles' Creed as printed on page 8. Please stand as we uh, confess our Christian faith in these words. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now worship our Lord with our offerings. Please be seated. We sing, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 793. We rise for prayer. In our prayers this morning, we include all those who are listed in our bulletin, but also include the family of Kathleen Ford, who was taken to her eternal rest. The memorial service for Kathleen will be held on September 25th, and we pray especially for Kathleen's family, Jeff and Amy. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in holy baptism, you have caused waters to break forth in the wilderness and made streams in the desert of this world. Open our eyes to this new life in Christ and our ears to hear your word. Free us to walk uprightly and loose our tongues to praise you for this treasure. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you have made us all heirs of your kingdom through holy baptism, holding the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. Keep us from showing partiality and making distinctions among ourselves and make us rich in good works. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, create and sustain in us a lively faith in Christ Jesus, and lead us by your Spirit to be active in all good works. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, Help parents to raise up their children to know you as their help and hope. 
that they may not be put, uh, they may not put trust in princes in whom there is no salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we place our hope in you and ask your blessing upon President Biden, our Congress, the few officials of each state, and especially on all first responders, those who care for us, and all rulers and their plans, that those plans would be ordered for the welfare of those they govern, and that you would execute your justice for the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, behold graciously the sick and those in need, Especially, we remember today the family of Kathleen Ford. We remember Libby and Sharla, Susan, Katie, Liz, Walter and Betty, Brittany, Beverly, Peter, Kariana, Keith, David, Gloria, Ted, Margaret, Don, Tammy, Don, Gary, Jeanette, John, Kinsley, Dick, Stephen, Kristen, and Kevin. We also thank you and offer prayers for Natalie, still in NICU, but improving. And all those whom we named before you silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that all who come to your supper on the days that it is served would approach your table with confession, receive, ready to receive your great and marvelous blessing given in the body and blood of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our sending hymn is hymn 839, O Christ, our true and only light.
Yeah. 